Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Gravel coming to you from Chicago as usual. And I'm still getting over uh, Friday night happy hour. But yesterday, everybody sent this to me. It's a really a disturbing um, bond violation hearing out of 3B. It is super interesting. It is not. Uh, it is not upbeat, but you know that's the way it is. <laughs> I hate to hit you with that on Saturday morning, but here we are, um, and we get to see Deborah Davis and Keith Stickley deal with, uh, and and Judge Middleton deal with a very very serious situation. Let's get it started. Good afternoon. Now. Good afternoon. Mr. Schwartz, can you hear me? Yes, barely, sir. All right. Uh, this is Judge Middleton. This is an emergency bond violation hearing in the matter of people versus <clears throat> Ryan James Schwartz. The file number is 221805FY. Mr. Schwartz is presently an inmate in the county jail. Also present is Deborah Davis from the prosecuting attorney's office and Mr. Keith Stickley, the chief public defender. Uh, Mr. Swartz, when I left work last night, I knew that they had just issued a search warrant to search your house for the complaining witness in this case, essentially is a welfare check for Jenny Akers. When I got to work this morning, I saw that you were in custody, but didn't know any of the details shared that information with the prosecutor who already knew it, and with your lawyer, Mr. Tim George, who did not. So we attempted to get Mr. George here. He went home ill. Um, he is ill, and he asked if we could have the chief public defender, Mr. Stickley, here to help cover. So the chief public defender is here and is available for consultation. Wow. Okay. So the the defendant they they pick him up. They run a welfare check for the victim of this crime. Honestly, uh, they think it's a probation violation, which it is. And uh, and Keith Stickley, who's who's the chief public defender, has to step in. It's not his client, and this is a heater. It's an absolute heater. And discussion in a breakout room if necessary. You were charged in this principal case, file 221805, with assault with intent to commit great bodily harm by strangulation, assault with a dangerous weapon, a rifle, and domestic violence. And I noted they did not charge the felony firearm charge. I couldn't find any affidavit or bond information. Oh, wait a minute, there's the affidavit. And uh, this is alleged to have occurred on August 22nd of 2022. They have a 911 tape and some body mic and some other stuff. So the charge was made, and you weren't arrested, I don't think, until October 26th. And you posted a bond, and the magistrate ordered several bond conditions. No alcohol, no contact whatsoever with Jenny Akers, including text, emails, or letters, or any other contact. No weapons, must not possess firearms or any dangerous weapons or reside where they are present. And no assaulting behavior. Uh, uh, Ms. Davis, what's the circumstance here? Your Honor, uh the allegations for the bond violation are that there was a firearm in his possession. We do have a picture of the uh, 22 caliber firearm. It, the concern, um, I don't have a full report from the troopers yet because this just did happen yesterday evening, but they did send me the pictures. They sent me the bond violation report. I think also very concerning is that uh, it's alleged that Mr. Schwartz lied to the court. I understand he wasn't under oath, but he lied about not having seen his children since the time he was in jail, which would have been 1027 of 2022. However, the troopers followed up with the older child's school and were advised that the child has been attending school in Marcellus and has been dropped off and using the bus system from the Cranberry Lake Road address. 
and that child was in fact dropped off on the bus while the troopers were there, uh, directly contradicting the things that Mr. Swartz had told them about uh, the children, including that he told the trooper uh, while he was there with his younger child and the other child hadn't been uh, dropped off on the bus yet, that his sister-in-law, uh, Jenny's sister, who he has no contact Here. information for, had dropped off the children just a, a day or two prior. Right. So again, um, the trooper was very concerned about the contradicting so, information given to him about the, um, the contact with the children. And last that we were aware, mother was the one who had the children in her care. So the fact that um, mother is now missing and uh, the sure. Michigan State Police are searching yes for her taking action as a missing person to try to locate her. Nobody that we can identify has had any contact with her in at least a week, uh, which is unusual for uh, her family. So if there, and there was no information given by the defendant to the Michigan State Police regarding where her whereabouts might be. In court, he had stated he believed she was down in Ohio uh, with her mother, with the children, which, um, has found to be untrue. Um, mother has said she's not down there. The kids are not down there. And in fact, that the children were with Mr. Schwartz um, during that time. So we have very strong concerns about um, what's going on in this case, why the Yeah, they got, they've got very serious concerns. Nobody has, says it here and for good reason, but the, you know, they're they're afraid she's not alive anymore and you know i don't have any special information all i did was see this clip because a whole bunch of people sent it to me and i'm i'm no expert on this topic but based on on the i i guess the body language of the defendant here i don't think this case ends well i i don't i don't have a good feeling about this situation i don't think anybody else does either and uh it's just it's it's riveting to, but to watch them go through this stuff. I, I think everyone has a glimmer of hope, but is doubtful. The, the complaining witness has disappeared, has not um, been in contact with anyone, and that the defendant has a firearm in his home. He I'll had the children with him. I'll give you a chance to speak, but you may want to consult with your lawyer first. So with all of this in mind, uh, we would ask that in the interest of public safety and the safety of our victim, that bond be canceled at this time until we can locate this victim, um, make sure that she is safe and well. Um, I think that there's certainly the information contained in the search warrant affidavit to try to find uh, Ms. Akers in that home. Is my understanding also the vehicle that she typically would use was at that Cranberry Lake address. So. Uh, her phone rings, but it goes to voicemail. It has not um, gone straight to voicemail yet, to my understanding, but nobody can reach her via text or phone call. And uh, to our knowledge, no one has spoken with her uh, in about a week. I mean, it's always suspicious when a mother doesn't have contact with her children for over a week. Yeah, uh, you, you know, it happens, I suppose, but the vast majority of women do not allow that to happen. All right, Mr. Schwartz, we were here on Tuesday. This matter's been adjourned twice while the police have been attempting to secure the presence of the complaining witness, or at least get some input from her. Uh, I was informed that they had received a letter that purports to be from Jenny Akers. I'm sure they're doing uh, it all. Ms. Davis, you, you included in your petition uh, a police report from June of 2022. That's not part of the instant case. No, I now, just a second. Mr. Schwartz, this is a bond violation hearing, and as such, the strict rules of evidence do not apply, and there is the availability of the admissibility of some hearsay evidence. That is a police report from the Michigan State Police dated June 20th of 2022 in incident number 54002779-22. That you put that in there because there's an allegation that he assaulted her with a firearm at that time. Yes, Your Honor. Um, again, showing the pattern of behavior. Right. 
uh, that is alleged uh, to be alleged. Mr. Sports's behavior and, and control toward this woman. I did also just get emailed to me a, a, a report uh, regarding what had happened yesterday. It hasn't been reviewed by the trooper, um, but I can review it quickly. I mean, it, it certainly just kind of supports everything that I've verbally said on the record as far as right. the interviews with the, the victim's mother, the child's school. Um, All right, so we've got an uh, alleged earlier incident involving the firearm in June where the victim basically said nothing happens and I don't want to prosecute. <clears throat> the incident that is charged presently is alleged to have occurred on August 22nd. And oh, I didn't catch that the first time through. So there's a there's domestic in June and then she doesn't want to prosecute, which is typical. Uh, so we have a history of this stuff. Involves strangulation and alleged use of a firearm. So the magistrate, <clears throat> as we always do, order no assaulted behavior, no firearms, and no contact. Uh, Mr. Swartz told me here in the courtroom that he has not had any contact with his children uh, since the date of his arrest with, in my youngest September. Son. Stop. That's what you said. I asked if you knew where your wife was, and you said she was with her mother in Mount Oreb, Ohio. Uh, Do I understand correctly from yeah, the proceedings? Stop. They contacted her. Judge is being so nice here. The guy blatantly lied to him in a prior hearing. The judge is not confused on the point. Uh, he, I mean, it, it'd be hard to not just take his head off right there. Um, but he, he, you know, he tells him stop. I, I, you know, I'm not believing anything you're saying, and carries on. But he, he's he's ultimately very nice about it as he does it. Mother and her mother says I haven't. She isn't here. I haven't heard from her. I can't get a hold of her. I don't have her, and I don't have the children. So the state police, in attempting to see perhaps if there had been a change of school or something to help locate the mother, went to the Marcellus schools, and they were informed. The children had been being dropped off at your address on Cranberry Lake Road. And so I guess they went there yesterday and Deborah, did they actually see one of the children being dropped off? Yes, Your Honor. When the troopers yeah. arrived there, the younger child was with Mr. Swartz and he again told the troopers that um, he said, basically saying, you must have misunderstood me in court. I didn't say that. I just hadn't seen my other child. And um, with that, the other child then got dropped off from okay. the bus mm -hmm. at that Cranberry Lake address. Also concerning um, and looking at at this is the, the rifle that was located was in plain view on top of a gun safe uh, in the property. I'm not sure if the troopers were able to get into that gun safe to see if there were other firearms. This is something well, that was in plain that's view. That's a question top. I have. This firearm is pink, which would lead me to believe that it's a woman's gun. But it, it's my daughter's. Right. And I guess, um, I guess regardless, it was within 10 feet of his bed in in the main bedroom um other concern though is that whoever he called to come pick up his children when he was getting arrested it was reported to be his father but my understanding my, is his father, father is deceased it's my step All right, well, stop 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 i'll give you a chance to talk but i want you to have a chance to talk to your attorney later one of the questions i wrote down when i first saw this is what's in the safe i don't believe that they got into the safe, Your Honor. Well, we didn't have a search warrant to enter the safe. And no, they were looking for a person. So at yeah, that point, so they, they unless she's in the safe, they didn't have so the authority to look in it. I have that question. So presumably the defendant knows how to get in the safe, and it's a gun safe, and it's for storage of guns. So if it's locked from everybody but him, that's not good. Secondly, I was interested in who, and don't answer this, Who's watching the children while he's here, while he's at work, while he's at court, while he's elsewhere? So um, that's my concern. But what you said to me is I have not seen my kids 
since the day I got arrested. So that was not true. You also have a specific order not to use or possess any firearms. There is an allegation that before this strangulation allegation in August, you assaulted the same complaining witness with a firearm. No, sir. Um, and uh, the children are apparently with you. We've been unable to personally serve Jenny Akers, the complaining witness. I know that Mr. Marvin was very concerned about this, contemplated getting a warrant for failing to appear pursuant to a duly served subpoena, but upon further review, it didn't appear that it had actually been served upon her. Now, no one seems to know where she is, and uh, there's a concern about that. So, Mr. Schwartz, I'm going to let you talk privately with Mr. Stickley before you blurt something out that might be problematic. So you're going to hit the button that says join the breakout room. Is it up here? Turn on the camera? Yeah. Which one do you want on? Seven. Seven I'm turn, I'm not, yeah, yeah, good luck, Keith. Go fix that situation. I'm not sure when I'm supposed to turn it on and when not. When, so. when you turn it on when there's nobody in the courtroom, when you turn it on off and then okay. well, we want to make sure we get a good shot of Debbie. Yes, absolutely. That was <laughs> <Of course. laughs> whatever Tim's got, I hope we don't get it. I agree. We do have a couple of arraignments to do. We went home last night. We had 121 people in custody this morning with 126. So there's a few people that he's going to need to talk to when we close the breakout. Mr. Stickley is back with us. Might take 59 seconds to get Mr. Schwartz back unless he clicks back in. All right, Mr. Schwartz is back with us. Mr. Schwartz, don't say anything yet. I'm going to inquire of your attorney. Uh, Mr. Stickley, what's the circumstance here? Uh, Your Honor, it's my understanding that uh, the the defendant would would apologize for having a uh, a firearm um, in his area or his control. Um, so I don't know if we want to take testimony on that or whatever. He apologizes, um, and and he does want the court to know uh, through me that there is a uh, there is a safe there that apparently has belonged to his now deceased actual father. There's a father and a stepfather. He wants the court to know that, that they're not the same people, so there's no confusion. Stepfather is alive. Father is not alive. Uh, he, is, he is not totally sure of what the contents of that is because he does not have access to it. He has no problem whatsoever with, with law enforcement or ever removing that if they have to. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't have access to it. Um, that's probably why there was a, a daughter's uh, firearm on top and not inside. He does not have access to it. Um, as far as um, as far, far as anything else that was brought up, uh, he doesn't he doesn't really know. But he suggests that uh, the, the the people or anybody who's interested in in uh, in the uh, the woman's whereabouts might want to contact her father because he believes that if she's not with her mother in Ohio, that she would probably be with her father in Pennsylvania, who's just undergone a couple of surgeries. Um, I have. Uh, by the way, none of that was from the defendant. That was Keith telling him the best play that he had under the circumstances, which is not good. But uh, he, he asked him a few questions, and he said, all right, this is what, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> the, the defendant wants to run his mouth and Keith is like, no, we have to concede this gun issue immediately. And uh, how are we going to handle these other things? He, he's doing a really nice job. He's, he's a good attorney. Uh, Deborah's a good attorney. Every, everyone's all over this. Some questions. Um, and I'm asking you, Mr. Stickley, and then we'll yes, see sure. At what point did the children go back to the Cranberry Lake address? I, Your Honor, I, I did not ascertain that. I don't know that if, if he has any position on that. And uh, if, if if it wasn't taken as testimony, I, I really don't know, Your Honor. All right. And 
who's watching the children while he is gone? We, I would have to address that, Your Honor. I did not. I would also, if you're going to go back. Let me ask one more. Deborah, you referred to a car that she usually uses. Uh, which vehicle is that? It was a full-size, um, I believe, gray Chevy Silverado pickup truck. So the question is, if she doesn't have that, what is she using for transportation? Correct. All right, Deborah, you had a Yeah, yeah. Mom's gone a week and doesn't have her vehicle. It's not good. Another question? Yes, there were allegations by uh, the complaining witness that there were multiple firearms that the defendant owns, handgun, long guns, assault rifle, um, and then, of course, ammunition. And if they're not in that gun safe, we would like to know where they're at, um, because it's my understanding that they were not taken on the night of the or the day of the first incident. Um, they were missing uh, from where Miss Akers had described the gun that he had uh, it was alleged to have held um, up and threatened her with was not there at the residence anymore uh, once the officers searched it. So there are firearms that, that may be in his possession or maybe he gave them to somebody to hold on. Right there, like the way he has his hands over his face, wherever this this is a guy that looks like his life is over and he knows it. That I mean, again, I'm not trained in this or whatever, but I, that is throwing off uh, the most guilty vibe you possibly can to me, just naturally. On to, but certainly a lot of concerns about that. All right, I think you can let him answer this, Mr. Swartz. How long have you lived at this house? I lived there with my dad before he passed since 2018. When did you live there since 2002? And did you all live there together at one time? Yes, me and my dad, my, uh, Jenny Akers, the two children. Yes, in 2018, I moved into that farmhouse with my dad to help him out. When did your dad pass? He passed um, Black Friday, 2021. All right, uh, I'm going to let you talk to Mr. Stickley again. Here's my questions. How long have the children been at that address? Who watches the children when you're gone? And, and how did they get there? There's some representation that her sister brought, it, brought them there. And what's the story on this truck? Um, and where are your firearms? With, I'm not compelling you to answer any of those. Those are just the with, questions that I have. Yes. With and Your Honor, with, with all due respect to, to Madam Prosecutor in the court, if if we're in a bond violation hearing and the allegation that it, it is that uh, he he possessed something or did something that he didn't, I would totally understand uh, the line of questioning and concern. However, this seems much more like some sort of a some sort of an interrogation. Uh, well, he, at he, this point. The press. He, uh, Keith Stickley is exactly on point, and he's doing the best he can. This is a horrible situation. It's absolutely an interrogation beyond the scope of the bond violation. Uh, law enforcement, the judge, Deborah Davis, are concerned uh, that, that this guy's committed a homicide, much more so than the fact that he, that he had a gun in his possession at, for a bond violation. Uh, Keith uh, has the same concerns, but he's there to represent this guy. And he says that, and it's it's just, and and then the judge acknowledges it. It's fascinating. Th that is, of course, what's going on. But he, they don't, he has not been charged with that. So we're, we're all of this is going on uh, in the context of the bond violation that is before the court. Um, I understand why everybody is taking the actions they are. Prosecutor moved on Tuesday to cancel or increase his bond. And in about two minutes, she's going to ask me to cancel his bond. Yeah. He has a 
preliminary examination scheduled for December 20th, I believe it is. And uh, he doesn't have to answer them, but I'm going to speculate as to what they are, and I'm going to be inclined to grant her motion to cancel his bond. He doesn't have to answer anything, but I've got those questions, and this is a public safety concern. So he doesn't have to answer it, but it will certainly strengthens the prosecution's position to cancel the bond. So you're right. This isn't an inquest. He's not compelled to say anything. That's why I didn't ask him anything. I went through you first. So if you don't want him to answer it, fine. But he lied to me from about 15 feet away when he looked me in the eye and told me he had not seen his kids since October, when they were, in fact, living at his house uh that very day so what else isn't he telling me the truth about i don't know so if you don't need any further consultation i'll just let miss davis make her motion miss davis your honor i believe that he admitted that he had a firearm i don't care if it's pink purple blue black whatever he admitted he had a firearm it was in his possession, in his bedroom, on top of a gun safe that he claims he doesn't have access to, even though he's been living in the house and presumably the gun safe has been there since at least a year ago when his father deceased. I strongly feel that his bond needs to be canceled until such time as we can have the preliminary exam. I, I hate to even say this, but whether we have Ms. Akers here or not, we will go forward with the preliminary exam using the court rules uh, um, allowable for the hearsay exceptions. I believe that uh, this is a huge... It's sad, but that, that right there tells you all you need to know that De Deborah Davis uh, highly suspects that that they'll never have this, this victim as a witness. Huge public safety risk. He's a flight risk um, with what has gone on here. Uh, he may not stick around. Um, he... The weapons that the, the are alleged to have been in his control the date that this happened, we have no idea where those weapons are. Um, either this is, if the, if the victim is still in this area, she is at great risk of harm, uh, in, in my opinion, based on what we have seen here. And we would ask that the court cancel his bond um, until we can have the preliminary examination held, and then they can readdress it at that point. Thank you. Mr. Stickley, what's your position? Your Honor, uh, the, de the defendant uh, greatly regrets that that he did have a, a firearm uh, in that house in his possession. Uh, he apologizes to court for that. He absolutely promises to show up for his court hearings. He does not feel like he is a uh, any sort of a, uh, a threat to the community, wants to be there uh, for his children in, in whatever appropriate way he can. So we ask that uh, uh, bond be, be reset. Thank you. Um, as I indicated, Mr. Swartz, I can use hearsay. What I'm reviewing here is the affidavit for the search warrant that was prepared by Trooper Andrew Librecht, L-I-B-B-R-E-C-H-T, yesterday, 12-8. And that was as much of a welfare check as it was search for evidence, but uh, I've got that. Uh, Ms. Davis has filed a bond violation affidavit, also signed by Trooper Librecht, regarding uh, the facts of last night. She also included a police report of Monday, June 20th, 2022, which is alleges an assault by you on Jenny Akers with a firearm. If that's your task, yes. And also that's it. considering the original charge contained in file 221805FY and the affidavit of probable cause that accompanies that. I also reviewed the original bond uh, conditions. Uh, order prepared by the magistrate and my interaction with you on Tuesday. Uh, Ms. Davis at that time asked me to increase or cancel the bond and I 
but you have made every court appearance. Uh, you have been here every time you are supposed to be, but this is no longer a fear of you not appearing. This is a public safety issue. Yeah, it is. And uh, we don't know where this woman is, and they've been looking for for a month. They have spoken to her, but no one's heard from her in the last seven days. Her phone doesn't ring. Her vehicle is parked at your house. Her mother doesn't know where she is unless she's a bold-faced liar. And uh, I don't know what the kids know or what else is known, but for the interest of public safety, your bond is canceled. We will review it further at the time of your preliminary examination on December 20th. She uh, Mr. George would have liked to have been here. The outcome would have been the same. I don't have anything else to say, Mr. Schwartz. I'll see you on November 20th. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll do, it, I'll do an official order to that effect. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stickley, for helping us with this. Yep. Let's hope we have a good outcome of this and you guys can find her. There was an indication that her sister dropped the kids off. Have they interviewed that person? Yes. All right. There's a lot of unknowns here, and Mr. Stickley is probably correct. This isn't an inquisition, but the unknowns do not inure to his benefit. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. All right. That finishes that. I'm going to do an order. He's going to remain in custody until we figure out what the circumstance is. Well, there you have it. I told you that one was serious. I like them fun, but I I I couldn't make that one particularly fun. That that's a uh, that's a bad situation. We're seeing what I'm what I'm guessing is going to turn into a homicide investigation uh, unfolding before our very eyes, and it's it's a bad situation. It, it isn't a it isn't a good time to get out the uh, screaming goat or the fez. It's just uh, that's just the way that that clip is. But it, but it was really interesting. I think I think it's a great uh, that that's uh, unlike a lot of my clips. That one is probably a good one for law students to see or other people to see. That's the system working the way it should. I think you've got good attorneys and Deborah Davis and Keith Stickley. You've got a good judge. Everyone's doing what they're supposed to do. Even Keith uh, smacking him back down. He, he gets pulled in because the defendant's attorney is sick. And he still just goes in there. And he, and he probably doesn't – he he probably has his own thoughts on the situation. But it's not about his thoughts. It's about providing a defense for this guy in a very serious situation. And he does a good job of it. Yes, bond is canceled. That That's hopeless. You're not getting a bond for him. Uh, when when the victim of his uh, domestic abuse and the bond violation can't be found, you're not getting a bond. Not not in front of Judge Middleton. Mm -mm. Now with Deborah Davis sitting there, and you shouldn't. But yeah, you know he did he did ask for it. That that that's what you do. Um, and he and he sort of he sort of said, "Hey, look, if you're gonna," the, he didn't come right out with it, but it, implicit in his comment was, "Look, if you're gonna charge this guy with homicide, let's do it." Right now we're here on a bond violation, and even the judge had to concede. But but I understand why the judge is what we're doing what they're doing. They're they're trying to get information right now, and the prosecutor, uh, the the judge isn't prosecuting the case, but he 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 does have to make a decision on the bond violation, and the, and the fact that. Um, the fact that the victim can't be found is relevant to the situation. It certainly is. And, of course, I don't know if they want to disclose what they have and what they don't have. It's clear to me that the defendant uh, figured out the state knows more than, than uh, he anticipated they did at this point. So it, I, th I think it was a good illustration of the system working properly on all fronts. A proper defense, a proper prosecution, a pro uh, 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 you know, a proper oversight from from a judge in a very very serious case. So it's not it's not quite as fun as story time, but you you know you have those, and then you have these. That's the way it is. And we've got range here at Law Talk with Mike. I can calibrate. 
I, I can calibrate. I, I can act like a human for a half hour <laughs> when the case is that serious. I can. I can. All right. Thank you all for coming out. I appreciate it. I will see you soon.